Welcome back to Up The Villa Podcast. Welcome to Transfer Hub, your home of Aston Villa's transfer news, rumours, links, breaking news, new signings and outgoings. If you are new to our channel, make sure you are subscribing. That is very, very important. If you are enjoying the content and you aren't subscribed, make sure you do that. It's really important. It helps me out massively. Smash them likes. Let's try and get to 900 likes on this episode. And most importantly, comment your thoughts in the comment section down below. Fabrizio Romano has spoken about Douglas Louise, and he has said the following. Juventus and Aston Villa set to talk again about Douglas Luiz in the next days. The only way to make a deal happen is by including players to join Aston Villa or no chance. Understand Samuel Ealing Jr. has been discussed as an option as well as Weston McKenney. That is coming from Fabrizio Romano. So to me, it is glaringly obvious that Aston Villa have to make a player sale before the end of June. That is the most important thing, in my opinion, to note of what is going on with Douglas Louise and Aston Villa currently in this window. Our window opens on the 14th of June, which is Friday. And with PSR, we've heard the noise. We've heard all the noise about Villa being close. Villa need to make a sale. And I just think this is the sale that we're going to do. Now, the problem with this sale is what we're trying to do, is that I think every single Villa fan would know how important Douglas Louise has been to Villa. We know what Douglas Louise's value is. We know that it's around 60 million. I think his value is around 60. I don't think we'd get anything more than 60. I think that is what Douglas Louise is valued at. The problem for Villa is Villa need this money to come in. We we need the money. And it feels like we've put feelers out, maybe, for Douglas Louise. And Juventus are the strongest candidates to take Douglas Louise off us. Now, with Juventus's position, they can't afford to spend £60 million on Douglas Louise. They want Coop Myers. They, they've got... I don't think they've got a lot of money anyway. So the only way that this deal can happen on the Juventus side of things is exactly what Fabrizio has said, is money and players. Now, the problem that Villa are in is that everybody knows that Aston Villa needs to sell a player before June. So whether it's, say, Arsenal after June, nobody is going to bid full whack for a Villa player because they know that we need to sell a player so it's, in my opinion, it's irrelevant of now of what we expect to get from Douglas Louise because the stark reality of this scenario is we are not getting full cash for Douglas Louise. It's not happening. So the only way Villa can potentially do this deal with Juventus is to take players plus cash. Now, obviously we've got to be careful of of who we take and what we take and whether it suits what Unai and what Aston Villa need. But that I, I, I can't really like reiterate anything other than that is the stark reality of where we're at with this deal. It's very unfortunate that we've got to sell a player. But if it's Douglas Louise, it's got to be Douglas Louise. And we've got to just sell and move on and, and grow and move to that next possible target of players coming in. Like, I specifically don't think that Weston McKenney, in the grand scheme of a transfer window, when we look back in September, the possibilities of how our transfer window has happened, May not be a bad deal. Weston McKenney is not a bad player. There's a lot of talk of the Leeds days and the time he was at Leeds. And, you know, I think sometimes, and I've said this before, and I'm literally reiterating what I've said before. Sometimes a player's move, you can't just beat them down like with a stick and go, you were crap at Leeds. You're a crap player. You can't come and play for Villa because you were crap for half a season at Leeds under a crap manager 
a team that was struggling down the bottom of the league. So we've got to look at the bigger picture that he's had a fantastic season with Juventus and coming into Aston Villa and not potentially being a Douglas Luiz replacement because that replacement could come later on in the window with another player. So I think when we're looking at potentially a Western mechanic, a Douglas Luiz and this young kid that plays for Juve, the bigger picture is what's going to happen at the end of this window. So that's what I would reiterate on my thoughts on the Western McKenney talk. The other scenarios we've got is that we can sell players after June. So we could sell somebody like Luca Dean. We could sell a John Duran. We could sell a Matty Cash. But those aren't going to happen really, really quickly and happen before June. So I think this is why that this, this has pr presented itself in front of us of just the stark nature of, of where we're at. You know, I see a lot of comments about, um, you know, sort of waiting and getting a points deduction or waiting and just keeping Douglas Louise and, and, and getting the punishment at the end of the season. That would be an absolute disaster. That would be an absolute disaster because you would have this thing like on your shoulders weighing you down of you've broke the rules, you're going to get punished. How unsettling would it be to have that hanging over us for six months towards the end of the season? I just think that would be the worst scenario possible is having that hanging over us and taking that into a season. It's just a disaster. And then the other aspect of it is, it's like we get linked with Matty Cash leaving to AC Milan. And it's like, we can't let Ka Cash go. Luke, how can you even, how can you even say that you'd want Matty Cash to leave? And it's like, well, someone's got to leave. Like, I don't want Douglas Luiz to go. But if we could have got get money for cash, then unfortunately, some players have got to leave. And I think where we've been for the last couple of years since Grealish left is the beauty of us. is We've been able to grow and we've been able to build this team. We've been able to build what we are right now. And we haven't had to sell any players. So we've now got into a scenario where we've spent a lot of money. We've, we've, we've been able to keep our core players, but now we've just got to this little sticking point where somebody's got to leave. And once that player leaves, it's going to add new life and, and enable us to spend some money because we've shown that we've had money coming in. So that gap now has widened and we've got money to spend. It's not about we're selling, we're selling our players and we've got no ambition and, and that's what we've become. We're just in a situation where somebody's got to leave. And unfortunately, it's Douglas Louise. Now, if I look at it as a whole, there's no one player in this team that, okay, you could say pay, you could say Watkins. Like th those, those are like my untouchables. They're more, un don't even touch them. But nobody's like irreplaceable. And with our manager and with Monchi and what we're building, we we can come out of this in in a different in a different direction altogether. So I know some of you will be screaming and disagreeing with what I'm saying, but it's just the reality of where we are. What what's the alternative? What in this scenario that we're in now? What is the alternative? We keep him, and we've got no we've we can't spend. We're going to get investigated and we're going to get screwed over at the end of next season. Or do we do we progressively react and build and grow with our ideas and grow with our coaching and be positive 
and come out of it in a different direction. So we've got to we've got to look at this now as it's unfortunate, but like we it's not the end of the world. Like we sold Grealish, and look where we are now. We we sold the player that was the one man team that was running the show, that was literally running everything, and he left, and we've managed to progress and progress and progress and have brilliant seasons. So for me, it's it's unfortunate, but I'm not just going to be downbeat now. I'm not just going to be, oh, he's leaving and become really negative and think it's the end of the world because it's not the end of the world. We can recruit somebody like we could recruit like for like or we, we could recruit and build a squad. And the other, the other aspect of this is when, when we when we linked with players, it, it's not always about, oh, you're leaving and you're replacing him. No, we, we, we know that we're a squad now. We know that we're not a one-man team. And the one negative from last season for me is that we was too reliable on that double pivot. When Kamara's out... Douglas Louise is not the same player. And we can't have that. We can't have one player leaving our team being injured. And then the whole thing falls apart. So how I see us recruiting this, this summer is multiple midfielders will be coming in. Ross Barkley, if it's Weston McKenney, if it's Conor Gallagher, then all of those players will be able to integrate and work as a team and we'll just have... One player moves out, another player moves in, and we can go again. And we're not solely reliable on a double pivot. So that that is honestly where I'm at. I've got I can't come on here and, and not be myself. I can't come on here and try and paper over and sort of just say and just try and people please. And people please and just and please what some people want to hear. So I'm just myself. If people agree, fine. If you disagree, fine. But this is just my opinion. So that's just where I'm at. Right? If you if you think it's the end of the world that he's leaving, then that's fine. If you feel like we can move and recruit and we can move around, etc., then that's fine as well. But that that's just where I'm at with this whole situation. So if he's going, he's going. We'll move on. We'll recruit. We'll be able to spend and we will adapt and grow together. But ultimately, it's unfortunate that potentially he's got to leave. He's a really good player and I really like him. But, you know, I'm I'm not in a period now with Villa where I'm sort of just doom and gloom thinking of the worst. I've already seen what this man can do with our team. And I've seen what he can do with players that aren't even his players. And if, he, if he's happy... If he's happy with what's going on at Villa and he's happy to commit his future to 2029, then I'm happy. And we've just got to trust the process and just go with the flow. Because ultimately, players are going to go and players are going to come in. And we've got to just adapt to this now. Because I've said this numerous times as well. That during the course of the season, I have said that we are by far from the finished article. And when you're far from the finished article, you can't just have this team here that you just put out week in, week out. And all these players stay and players just keep coming in and coming in and coming in. Well, that's just not realistic. These aren't Unai Emery's players. He has been able to transform this football club with players that aren't even his own players. The only players he's been able to bring in is Tiedemans, Moreno, he's brought in Pau Torres, he's brought in Duran, he's brought in Diaby, he's brought in Rogers. So six players, I think, I think I've named them all. Six players we've been able to bring in. Longley, Longley's gone, Daniolo's gone. So six core players he's been able to bring in. And this whole process is, he's growing and building his team and he's building this identity of what he wants Villa to look like in three or four years time. And some of these players that have been here before he got here, he might not even rate, he might not rate them. Do you know what I mean? He's been able to work magic and get a tune out of them and get them to play really well. 
ultimately, some are going. So we gotta we gotta just we gotta just deal with this. We gotta just deal with it. Um, so let's have a look then. At, so Samuel Ealing Jr., 20 years of age, English, left-footed, of course, left-footed, market value at 11.6 million. So for score rating of 6.83, been playing on that left-hand side for Juventus. I know he's very quick and he's a speedster. Don't really know too much about him. He's played 24 times, started for average 34 minutes per game. He's got one goal and he's got two assists. Passing accuracy is at 79%, 83% in his own half, 71% in the opposition half, 33% accuracy of long balls, 40% accuracy of chipped passes, 1.7 ball recoveries per game, one tackle per game, successful dribbles 33%, duels won 47%, 43% ground duels won, and 75% aerial duels won, which is very, very good. So, I've never really seen him play, so I can't really comment too much on him. But, you know, I just wanted to talk to you about Douglas Louise, talk to you about his deal, talk to you about where I'm at. Love to know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Up the villa.